Section 6.1, the wave nature of light. So if you're going to refer to light, you have to know, first of all, that light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. And it's called electromagnetic because there is an electric wave that is present as the energy tra transfers or travels. And there's also a magnetic wave. So there's a magnetic field and there's an electric field. And those two fields are interplaying with each other and basically traveling in each other. And since it is energy that this... the that light is also a form of energy, it's many times called radiant energy. It's radiating out from the sun. The sun produced the wave just like a boat would produce waves on water. And what ultimately caused the wave to propagate was the electrons in the sun that are so highly vibrating because of the energy that the sun has that it's causing a disturbance in electrical field and a magnetic field, and it's traveling because of that. So the electric field then has effects on other things like matter. So ultimately, we're going to be studying the electronic structure of an atom, which is its arrangement of electrons. So we have to first understand light, but knowing that it came from electrons, and then light plays with electrons once it gets to somewhere where there is matter. So um, any electromagnetic radiation, so radio waves or x-rays or microwaves or heat or light, all of this different forms of radiation is characterized by its nature as a wave. And so a wave kind of as a repeating oscillation. It's a back and forth and back and forth movement. And um, there's some parts of it that you can know. The first part is that from crest to crest or from trough to trough, repeating at a very uh, specific intervals is a wavelength. And a wavelength is named after uh, the Greek letter lambda, and you can also have an amplitude. The amplitude is the intensity of that wave, and it's corresponding from the middle of that wave um, outwards to either the crest or the trough. So how far up from the middle it goes, how far down from the middle uh, that it goes. The frequency of a wave is the number of cycles that pass a point in one second. Um, the Greek letter nu is used. It looks kind of like a italicized V, but it's the N in Greek. Uh, that's for frequency. And its, its unit is called the hertz. And a hertz is a cycle per second. So a repetition of this oscillation per second. How many times does it wiggle up and down or back and forth in one second? That would be its frequency or its hertz. And uh, if you're going to write a hertz, you, you could just write HZ, but it's better just to say it's, it's blank per second. So it's whatever else that is being multiplied by, divided by seconds. So just divided by seconds is sufficient for uh, frequency. If you notice that the picture on the left, if you have more cycles in a certain uh, bit of time, or a certain distance, then the wavelength actually shortens. So the frequency, how frequent something is traveling, is inverted or an inverse relationship to the wavelength. So the longer the wavelength, the fewer cycles would pass in a second. The, the, the shorter the wavelength, the more cycles would pass. So it's an inverse relationship. So you're going to have lambda nu on the same side of the equal sign because any time that you have two uh, two units on the same side of the equal sign they are inverted to each other uh, so one would go up the other go down imagine two times five equals ten double the ten to to twenty but keep the two the same if you if you freeze the two and raise the ten to twenty you would have to raise the 5 to 10. So 
as one goes up, the other goes down if it's on the same side. So lambda and nu are, are inverse of each other. So here you can see the formula that lambda, which is the, the wavelength, and nu, which is the frequency, are inverse relationships, so because they're, they're on the same side of the equal sign. On the other side is the speed of light. So little c is characterized, is, is denoting the speed of light, which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So it does not matter what type of electromagnetic radiation, whether it's gamma rays or x-rays or radio waves, microwaves, it doesn't matter, visible light. All of these are considered light. Now we see visible light as different colors, Roy G. Biv, but all of these are electromagnetic radiation uh, caused by vibrating electrons in the sun is actually traveling at the same speed. And we can, we can detect only a very a sliver of this electromagnetic radiation with our eyes. Uh, our skin can feel infrared radiation, so we would know heat, that we could detect heat. Um, others we're kind of blind to. The radio waves, we don't know that they're there. Um, X-rays, when we get our, an X-ray at the doctor or the dentist, we, we can't really feel it. It doesn't do anything to us, but it's energy passing through our bodies. If you'll also notice that in uh, visible light, the wavelength of the visible light is in the nanometer scale. So this is 10 to the ninth or one billionth of a meter. So 750 billionths of a meter would be the wavelength up and down of light. That's how distant it is or the distance of it. And then 400 would be the other side. So, so red is long and low energy and blue or violet is short and very high energy.